Before we begin, I want to wish a happy life to the person celebrating their birthday today. Without further ado, let's dive right into the storyline. A man named Remy who works as a painting restorer leads a seemingly normal life with his wife, Lucille, and their two children. Despite Remy's kind nature, people around him view him as somewhat of a loser. One day, after playing with his kids, Remy experiences a strange phenomenon where he suddenly sinks into his seat, causing confusion. This unusual occurrence repeats, and Remy tries to explain it to his wife. However, she doesn't take him seriously. The following day, a girl named Delphine approaches him to get her old painting restored. While he is checking the painting in his studio, his wife brings their children and asks him to look after them. After spending some time together with his children, they go back home, forgetting to turn off the tap water. And it causes his studio to flood the next day. While busy trying to save his old paintings, suddenly Remy sinks again, and this time he emerges in the lake of another world. He is then noticed by tribesmen who are running towards him. He is scared and trying to run away but suddenly sinks again as someone pulls him up in his studio. Then, Delphine shows up to check her painting, and luckily, Remy manages to save it. He then asks her to come back next week for her painting. Later at his home, things are getting worse for Remy. Not only is he most likely losing his job, but his wife suddenly wants a divorce and has already brought her boyfriend to their house. Not only that, together with her boyfriend, Dr. Geller, they ask Remy to leave the house, and Remy just stands there, unable to do anything about it. He then goes to his family to ask for a solution, but they don't seem to care that much and shift their attention to his brother, who has now become successful. When Remy goes to make coffee, his cat suddenly freezes mid-air, and he notices that time has stopped. He then cries for help as he sinks again into the floor, which takes him to another world again. Confused by what just happened, he then starts wandering around and encounters tribesmen who are preparing their food. Thinking that they are just wearing costumes, Remy casually asks them for directions but can't understand what they are saying. Slowly, he realizes that they are real tribesmen, which makes him run away. The tribesmen start chasing him, and Remy panics even more when he accidentally runs into their village and ends up entering a cave. Shortly after, a creature bites his neck, and suddenly he gets thrown back to his kitchen. His family hears the noise and finds Remy in a mess. Remy tries to explain what is happening, but his mother just thinks Remy was reckless. Then he passes out and wakes up at the hospital. After being checked by the doctor, he tells her that he went to another place and shows her the time difference between the current time and the time on his watch. However, the doctor is careless and thinks Remy is just in shock. The next day at his studio, when Remy is surrounded by his client's lawyer requesting compensation for the damaged painting, Suddenly, he starts sinking again and pops out from a basket, surrounded by tribesmen who greet him as their king and savior. Remy looks confused, and when the tribesmen ask him to fly, he assumes that since everything already doesn't make sense, maybe he could fly. He then tries it and ends up kissing the ground. The tribesmen wonder why he refuses to fly, so they force Remy to eat a green berry to be able to understand their language. Finally, Remy understands why and how he has been pulled into this world. The Maikshi tribe is oppressed by another tribe called the Zotarian which Remy encountered earlier, and their master called Zotan, a giant who enslaves them and eats people when he is hungry. Using a secret artifact they call their savior, whom they believe is from another world, to kill and free them from Zotan. After hearing this, Remy insists that he is just an ordinary man and refuses to be their savior. The tribe seem unable to accept rejection, so they then hang Remy and threaten to drop him if he refuses to become their savior. Of course, Remy finally accepts it. He is then taken to his room to figure out how he is going to kill Zotan. However, when he touches a watermelon, he suddenly returns to his studio. Because of the time freeze, people around him don't know what just happened and don't even question why Remy suddenly has a watermelon. Remy then tells his friend Serge about his experience. Of course, Serge doesn't believe him, instead, he feels bad for Remy, who has been under stress lately. Suddenly, Delphine comes to check his painting and also expresses concern about Remy. Remy is a little bit shocked knowing that someone is worried about him. He then tells her that her painting is not finished yet. Afterward, Remy goes to the library to look for a book about Zotarian but can't find any. He then proceeds to buy a bodybuilding book instead. The next day, when Remy returns to the other world, he is given a sword to use to kill Zotan. Remy then wonders why the tribes never think to leave their village if they are being oppressed. The elder explains that according to their ancestors, if two or more of them pass the borders, they will get struck by lightning. Of course, for Remy, that is just nonsense superstition, and he begins to prove that nothing will happen. Soon after, they all begin to leave their village to find a new settlement. After a while, they come across to Zotarian. When told to go back, Remy, with no choice, says he's the savior. With zero experience in fighting, Remy starts swinging his sword recklessly, but luckily, he manages to kill one of them. The other one warns Remy that his actions will lead to war. After he leaves, the tribes take the Zotarian's body and plan to eat it, believing it will give them strength. Upon hearing that, Remy looks shocked and forbids them from eating people again. Shortly after, 
Remy is informed that Zotan has declared war and already sent his troops. He then goes back to the library to find a book about war, and he gets recommended The Art of War by Sun Tzu. He also asks where to buy a bulletproof vest, which he assumes it will stop Spears. Afterward, Remy begins to read the book and makes a strategy to win the war. When he returns, Remy gives a speech to give their people courage to fight for their freedom. At night, Remy takes advantage of his position and asks a tribesman to provide him with six women to help him relax before tomorrow's war. However, when the girls are gathered, suddenly Remy remembers and misses his wife. He forgets his initial intention to have fun and instead turns it into a discussion about marriage and life. He talks about his wife cheating on him and how he spent his whole life as a loser, lacking the courage to speak his mind. Suddenly, he hears his son calling him, and somehow Remy immediately goes back to his son's room to comfort him before his son goes to sleep. Remy then waits to be pulled back, but nothing happens, so he decides to read a book before sleep. However, suddenly he gets pulled back and pops out in the middle of the battlefield. Soon after, Remy asks his men to retreat and climb up to higher ground. He instructs them to gather branches and lots of rope to teach them how to make bows and arrows. While the Zotarian tribe sleep, Remy and his men are busy making a plan. The next morning, with confidence, Remy wakes up the Zotarians and provokes them by slapping them. Remy succeeds and leads them into the trap. While hiding inside a hollow log, his men show up and release arrows which the Zotarians have never seen before. This forces them to retreat. Remy and his men claim their victory and finally gain their freedom. In the next scene, Remy begins to build his kingdom. Using his modern knowledge, he succeeds in making progress after another and establishes his modern civilization. Remy now becomes the emperor and is well respected in his kingdom, which he never received in his world. He also flexes to his favorite mistress by painting her in the style of the Mona Lisa portrait. When Remy returns to his house, he realizes that he has spent five months in the other world, and during his time there, it changes Remy's personality. He is not the same person anymore. He even begins to stand up after being disrespected by Geller, making him whine like a loser. When Remy arrives at his studio, a man's car almost hits him. Then the man tries to scold Remy but can't withstand Remy's intimidation. He then straightforwardly tells the lawyers who are waiting for him that he quits his job. Remy switches his job, handing out flyers for an Indian restaurant. But when his request for a five-minute break is denied, he doesn't think twice to quit. Afterward, time stops again, and Remy freely swims on the pavement to return to his kingdom. He then meets with one of his concubines and shares that he wants to live here for good. He thinks, why bother to come back if he can do whatever he wants here? Without even realizing it, Remy starts enslaving their people, asking them to build things to make his palace fancier. Later in the council meeting, Remy lets his council express their complaints. However, as his council one by one shares the problems around the city, including how they are overworked, Remy, who seems overwhelmed by it, chooses to ignore their complaints. He gets angry when one of them reports that their people want to leave and go back to Zodan. When Remy confronts them to negotiate, their people still insist on wanting to leave. They are fed up with working non-stop and prefer to live under Zodan. Things heat up and become violent as people start protesting in the streets. After being cornered, Remy gives up and asks the elder to send him back home and to never call him again. Upon returning to his real life, he goes to meet his friend to ask if he can stay in his studio. Now, we can see Remy being humbled and rethinking about his decisions in the past. Two weeks later, he starts to open his studio again. His ex-wife comes to visit him and brings Remy the sword that he left in their old house. And as she is about to leave, Delphine also visits to take his painting. Delphine is amazed by a Remy's works, and Remy tells her that she doesn't have to pay but just invites him for dinner instead. But when everything starts to turn good for Remy, suddenly he gets pulled again to the other world. When Remy returns, the Elder forces him to fulfill the prophecy, which is to kill Zotan. When Remy realizes that he is in Zotan's cave, he immediately tries to escape. But Zotan, already aware of his presence, starts to attack him. Remy then takes a spear to defend himself and finally manages to hurt Zotan, causing him to collapse and die in front of the tribesmen. Soon after, Remy walks out from the cave as a hero, and people start chanting his name as their king and savior. Suddenly, the Elder reveals one more thing to complete the prophecy, which is that Remy has to willingly let them eat him to gain his knowledge and strength. After hearing that, Remy then flees for his life. When the Elder burns his artifact, time in Remy's world hasn't stopped, and Delphine tries to wake up Remy and brings him to the hospital. Shortly after, his ex-wife and his family gather as Remy is in critical condition. Meanwhile, in the other world, Remy finally gets captured, and when the people surround him, he pleads to his concubine to throw away the artifact, which she manages to throw into the lake. Finally, Remy returns to his world and realizes it's all over. Remy then meets his family, who seem to just pretend to worry about him. Things get awkward when he meets Lucille and Delphine. After a little chat, Delphine leaves them alone. Afterward, Lucille tells Remy that she has dumped Geller, and she begs Remy to go back home with her because she still loves him. However, Remy refuses to go back with her after what she did to him. A few months later, Remy visits his children and Lucille, considering living with them as a family again. Meanwhile, in the other world, the tribesmen build a statue of Remy as their savior. 
In the end of the movie, Remy discovers through the news that his Mona Lisa painting is found, and experts say that the painting was made by Da Vinci himself at age 5 because it's a little bit clumsy. The end. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more interesting movie recaps. See you in the next video.